Good morning. morning. So you all survived the rain. (laughs) It's ironic that this morning I'm talking about water, but in a different way than they're talking about water, how it showed up. But that's okay. Um, It'll still work. Um, So glad to see you all here this morning. And just happy to have a a great day that, uh, you know, it's a good week when when we have uh, life-giving water. Isn't that true? Um, so a bottle of water, bottle of water. How much would you pay for a bottle of water, right? You could probably go down to the store. Uh, I probably got this in like a 12 pack for maybe four bucks, right? So, you know, not very much, but what if I changed the conditions on you a little bit? What if I said, how much would you be willing to pay for this bottle of water after you've been out working all day in the sun and there's no other, you haven't had a drink all day? How much are you willing to pay for me for this bottle of water now? Probably a little more than the 50 cents you paid earlier. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe you're willing to pay three or four bucks. You know, maybe I could get five bucks out of you for this bottle of water. If you need a bottle of water after you're done working, come talk to me. Now, what if I change the conditions on you again? What if, what if I was trying to sell you this bottle of water uh, because you're dehydrated? And not only dehydrated, but your body's starting to shut down. You've been, you've been out in the sun all day, all week. You've had no water. You, things are drying up. Your skin is becoming dry. You're getting headaches. Your internal organs are starting to scream at you a little bit. How much is a bottle of water worth when it's about life? Right? Probably a little more than five bucks. So that's the... That's a situation we're going to talk about today in Psalm 63. So if you open your Bibles to Psalm 63, um, this is the image that David starts with in in his psalm. He starts with an image of being stuck in the wilderness. He's stuck in the desert, and um, he begins to question, what what is it worth? What is a little bit of water worth? So Psalm 63, uh, Verses uh, 1 to 5. I'm also going to read the title. Actually, it's important, and I'll get to that in a minute. A Psalm of David, when he was in the desert of Judah. O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I've seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life. and My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. David starts this psalm with a contemplation. All right, he is, uh, as the you know the title of the psalm puts it, uh, situated David in the desert wilderness of Judah. Uh, There's a couple times that this could be true. It could be early in his career when he's. Uh, being chased by Saul, and uh, he is kind of running through the wilderness chasing Saul. I think a better situation is later in his life when his son Absalom is chasing him, Uh, in part because later he ends up talking about the king, but he also talks about knowing the Lord in the sanctuary here in verse 4. So I think this scenario actually sets up a little bit better the, the kinds of things that are happening in this psalm. David is fleeing from his son. And he's fleeing, he's in the, in the Judean wilderness. The Judean wilderness is, is dry and weary, and David is sitting there at the end of a long day. You know, probably he's, he's run, from, run from his son during the day, possibly. Uh, and, and he's beginning to realize it's hot out here. And <laughs> you would get that when you're in the desert. It's hot out here. It's hot out here and there's no water. My lips are becoming dry and cracked. I'm beginning to feel the need for water. I'm beginning to feel the need that the dry and dusty landscape that I'm in is is not satisfying. I don't want this anymore. And so, obviously, he's using this as a metaphor, uh, so I'll make the metaphor explicit. (laughs) You know, in, in the one sense, he's talking about being stuck in a desert land. It's very fitting for his situation. But he begins to think about being stuck in a desert land apart from God, right? Lord, I have not seen you for a while. That's the metaphor this morning. Lord, I have not seen you for a while. I am getting dry. 
I am dehydrated. Now, <clears throat> more than water, his soul is tired. His relation, in his relationship with God, he's becoming tired, thirsty, and alone. And he says explicitly there at the end of verse 1, in a dry and weary land where there is no water. You know, think about that. that that's, the, that's the image he's trying to make you think about his relationship with God. And sometimes our relationship with God. This is a very personal psalm in that have you ever been through a time where it's felt like you're stuck in a dry and weary land where there is no water? What's that bottle of water worth at that point in your life? How do you get that bottle of water? Now, uh, I, was, I was thinking this week, I looked up some effects of dehydration. Uh, effects of dehydration on the body. So on the body. Uh, it begins, you know, you, you start getting thirsty. Uh, it, and, but really, some of the early signs are headaches and uh, fatigue. And then it kind of escalates. So some of the extreme ones that I found, you get extreme thirst, irritable, confusion, start having sunken eyes. Dry skin as the water is, is taken out. Low blood pressure. Start getting a rapid heartbeat. Rapid breathing. When you cry, you have no tears as the water begins to kind of leave your system. You begin to have fevers. And at kind of the extreme ends, you start becoming delirious and in some cases unconscious. That's the physical effects of dehydration on a body. Now I want us to think for a second about the, f the spiritual effects of dehydration, of, of spiritual dehydration. What happens to our souls when we stop seeing the Lord for long periods of time, when we stop seeking Him? It's very similar. I, I wanted to kind of parallel these, these symptoms, but uh, we begin to have an extreme thirst. Lord, where, where are you? Lord, where are you? Extreme thirst for the Lord. We become irritable. Have you ever known someone who... I become irritable. Uh, when I've not been with the Lord, you, you become irritable. You get confused. Confused about what you're doing. Confused about where the Lord's at in your life. And instead of sunken eyes, downcast eyes. Things are only ever bad. Thin-skinned. You can't take any, any criticism anymore. That, I mean, that's one of the early signs, actually. Is, is you stop being able to, to take slight criticism. You become thin-skinned and, and retaliate. Anxious hearts. Not just rapidly beating, anxious hearts. Gasping for air, gasping for truth. We have too many fears. We have too many tears sometimes. And in the worst cases, we become delirious about the Lord and we become unconscious, and we stop looking. How much would you be willing to pay for a bottle of water, of life-giving water under those conditions? How much would a bottle of water cost? I wish I could bottle up soul water. <laughs> right? Don't you wish you had access to soul water that you could bottle up and, and you could just take and, and sell to someone? who is soul-weary. Because we all know soul-weary people. We all know people who, who have hit that moment in their life when they need that bottle of water. Everyone gets thirsty uh, for the Lord. Everyone gets, the, gets that kind of soul-weariness. But what do they fill their lives with at that point? What do they fill their lives with? So David gives us a really good example of what we should fill our lives with. We often fill our lives with many, many other things, um, and we've talked about those previously. I'm not going to rehash that. But David gives us a list of some things. Lord, I'm soul weary. What do, what do I do? What, how, do I, how do I help that? So look at verses 2 through 5. I'm going to read these again um, to give us a, a clue of what David says. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. You know, David does a couple of things here. 
Uh, he gives us three things, actually, that he turns to when he becomes soul-weary, when he is soul-tired, and he needs some refreshing water, when he needs some presence of the Lord. And I've talked about some of these things before, so I hope some of this is not new to you. But the, the thing that David actually does is he reflects on times when he has seen the Lord. That's the first thing he does. He reflects on his time that he has seen the Lord. Lord, uh, I am tired and dry and weary, but I've seen you before. And he begins to think about these times. So he says in verse 2, I have seen you in the sanctuary. I've seen you in the sanctuary. David gives three things. One, he, he has a place that he's seen the Lord. Two, he remembers the power and the glory of the Lord. And third, he remembers the presence of the Lord. So I want to talk through those, those things and this recollection that he has and how they can help us when we are in a dry and weary place. So first, he remembers a place. Where have you been in your life where you know here's a place that I've met the Lord. Here's a place that I've, I've met the Lord. You know, in the Old Testament, they used to put up kind of altars. <laughs> They'd make little stone altars. Here's where I met the Lord. Here's where we met the Lord. And, it, and it, even further than that, they begin to, um, they, they have the tabernacle. Here's where the nation meets the Lord. And the tabernacle, they, they end up building a temple. Here's where the nation can come and worship the Lord. Now, God did not mean for him to get stuck in a place, <laughs> right? Thank you, Jesus, that God is not stuck in a place. Otherwise, we'd be very far from him right now because he'd be on the other side of the world. Jesus came that we could have that meeting location anywhere. That place is with him. Where is a place that you have met the Lord? Now, we don't need the temple any longer, but sometimes... A specific place can help us focus. For some people, that's a, the church building. So you come to the church building, and you're able to focus. Maybe it calms your heart. Uh, maybe it's somewhere that you have actually met him before, and so you go there and you say, Lord, I've met you here before. Can I meet you here again? When I was in high school, I, I had a place, a very specific place. Uh, and it, it's actually titled Furness Place. It's the road next to my house. It was about uh, maybe a half a mile long. So I'd walk to one end of it, and I'd walk back, and, and that was kind of my evening walks. And I would take time every day to go out to Furness Place, to walk the road, to talk to God, to speak to him from my heart, to clear my heart, my mind, uh, to seek his guidance and wisdom. And I'd, I'd cut out this, this time and this place, not because, and there's nothing magical about Furness Place. It actually is quite nothing to look at during the day and even less to look at at night when I went. Uh, but it's a place that I found focus. It's a place that I found focus. So, so it wouldn't, you know, it's, it wouldn't be a particularly great place for anybody else necessarily. But it's where I found focus. And, you know, I encourage you to find that place. Develop a place where you can seek the Lord, that's accessible to you, that you can go to, uh, that you can intentionally, and this is, this is the part about it, it's, it's not the place, but this is the place you intentionally go to seek, to pray, to read if it's not dark at night, to seek the Lord, to focus your hearts and your minds on Him. Find that place. Not because the place is magical, but because it's somewhere you can focus, somewhere you can turn to, somewhere you can seek the Lord with your, with your whole mind, heart, and soul. The second thing David does, so he remembers a place. The second thing he does is he remembers the power and the glory of the Lord. Uh, that's in, there in the end of verse 2. And beheld your power and your glory. You know, David remembers the work of the Lord in his own life, and he encourages uh, and, and in his memory of the Lord, he, he says, Lord, I remember your power and your glory. I remember what you have done for me. This is something we constantly have to focus on. I remember what you've done for me because when we remember what the Lord has done for us in the past, we can trust him in our present and we can trust him in our future. The Lord has been with me through this. He will get me 
through that. Remember the work of the Lord in your life. And now, this is not just large things. So for David, you know, as he's running through the wilderness, this is not the first time that he's run from someone. (laughs) He ends up running a couple of times in his life. But the Lord delivered him through that, and he will continue delivering him. So large things, yes, um, certainly. There are lots of things that we need to turn to and remember, here's how the Lord worked in my life. You know, here's how the Lord saved me. Here's how the Lord protected me at a time in my life. What are those things for you? But also, remember the Lord in the small things. There's little things that he does every day for us that we can turn our our hands and our hearts to to think about. Here's how the Lord has delivered me in a different way. Whether that's uh, the Lord has helped me through this day to not get angry. (laughs) The Lord has helped me through this day to rejoice in his presence. The Lord has helped me through this day to love my spouse better, to love my kids better, to love my friends better. When we stop seeing, when we stop seeking the power and the glory of the Lord, we start drying up. Lord, show me your glory. That's an application point. Lord, show me your glory. Help me to remember the things that you have done for me. Help me to remember the things you've done for me and help me to recognize those things when they come, come along. Help me to recognize the times that you have impacted my life. Because we don't always see it. We, we stop seeing the Lord's work in our lives. And third thing David does, so the place the power and the glory, but also the presence. He remembers the presence of the Lord. He says this in verse 3, because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. Now, I think this is actually the the key moment for David, that your love, Lord, is better than life. Your love, Lord, is better than anything else. Your love is what makes, what sustains me in everything that I do. His relationship with the Lord is the most important component of, of his worship. It's the most important component of his life. It's a covenant relationship. The Lord has promised that he will interact with David, that he will guide him and protect him, and David has sworn to worship him alone. Now, I think at this point, uh, you know, when David is saying, Lord, I'm I'm weary and I I forget what your presence is like. Uh, It's like a homesick child. You know, I worked as a Boy Scout chaplain. I think I've mentioned that a few times. And actually, the thing that I dealt with most as a chaplain was helping homesick kids. You get a lot of them at camp. Have you ever, have you ever talked to a homesick kid? Have you ever been a homesick kid? Right? That first week that you're dropped into camp without mom and dad, that first week that you are all by yourself, do you remember what that's like? It's terrible. It's terrible. Why is it terrible? Because you are, you are keenly aware that there is not a parent near you at that moment in your life. You are keenly aware that you are all alone. Well, you're surrounded by lots of other people, but they're not your parents, right? They're not someone that you trust. And here's, here's the thing about homesickness. Um, it, it really happens because that child loves their parents so much. That child loves their family so much that it hurts, hurts deep in their souls when they are taken away from them. That's the kind of loneliness that David is talking about with the Lord. He's saying, Lord, it hurts when your presence is not near me, like a homesick child, because I've known your presence, and when it is taken away, it is terrible. (laughs) It is terrible. You can't talk a homesick child out of being homesick, by the way. You can distract them for a little bit, but you can't do much else with them. Uh, you can distract them for a handful of days. Um, you know, I learned that you, if you could get them through Wednesday, they were usually good through Friday. But even that was, it was tricky for some of them. But that's, that's it, right? We are homesick children for the Lord sometimes. You, you, we don't lose that. When you, when you know the presence of the Lord, you seek his presence even more. And it hurts when you think he's gone. Now, <clears throat> David is saying, Lord, I want your presence. He needs the Lord's presence. 
we need the Lord's presence. We are built to be in a relationship with God. That's what, that's what he designed for us. He wants us to have that presence, that relationship. You know, it's like the woman at the well in John 4. As Jesus is traveling through Samaria, he stops at a well, and he's tired from his journey, and he asks for water. And she says, Lord, why are you asking me for water? Why can't you draw it yourself? And he replies, if you'd known who you asked, I would have given you living water. I would have given you living water, welling up to eternal life. You know, that's the kind of water we're talking about. The presence of the Lord is that living water that we all need. Now, the, as David prays these things, as he remembers these things, the places that he's been with the Lord, the uh, power and glory that he's seen of the Lord, the um, presence of the Lord, in verse 5 he says, My soul will be satisfied. With, as with the richest of foods, with singing lips, my mouth will praise you. By recalling these things, he actually finds living water. He finds some of that living water. And he finds it for the present. But then he finds it for the future as well. So if you look with me at verses 6 through 11. On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. They who seek my life will be destroyed. They will go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for jackals. uh, But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God's name will praise him, while the mouths of liars will be silenced. You'll notice again that David talks about a time where he was reflecting. Uh, So verse 6, on my bed I remember you. You know, as he's thinking at night. Have you ever thought at night? It's a terrible thought. It's a terrible thing. (laughs) To be thinking at night means he's probably unsettled. He's unsettled in his sleep. He's thinking about tomorrow. Uh, You know, the watches of the night's coming through. And he knows that it's a difficult day ahead. Now, one thing that we can do and what David does here is, I think of you through the watches of the night. We can turn our restless sleep sometimes into moments of praise and fellowship with the Lord. Tim Keller wrote in in his reflections on the psalm here, training our hearts to spend our sleepless nights in praise and fellowship with God will redeem our frustration, turning it into a cherished intimacy with our Savior. That is, sometimes we have those nights that we need to seek, that, that we are anxious, we are, we are being kept up, we're like David, worrying about tomorrow. And we can turn that worry and frustration and being awake at night into a reflection on the Lord, into a time of praise and fellowship with the Lord. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you go back to sleep, <laughs> right? It doesn't mean you'll, you'll necessarily go back to sleep, but it means that you can take that time to spend with the Lord a little bit to get a little bit of that living water that gets you through tomorrow. Now, he closes with uh, images of trust. Images of trust. So he says, I sing from the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. So after David is able to think about things that have, uh, things that he has done to seek the Lord, he knows that, the next step is the Lord will guide him and protect him. The Lord will deliver him. The Lord is close. We need only to call out for him. Now, I want to talk just for a moment about one of these images. I mean, these are all good images, and you could spend a lot of time on them. But my soul clings to you. I I was thinking about this this week. My soul clings to you. What is something that you have clung on to? All right, maybe you're like me. Uh, This was very convicting this week. I cling on to my phone, right, to my phone. It it has texts, it has phone calls, it has updates, and I love just looking at it and seeing what's there, right? (laughs) How many of you have ever done, man, this is great. (laughs) And you just sit there and you you kind of look at your phone and you stare at your phone and you 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 swipe on your phone, and it's, it's never very far from you. Phones are not very far from us anymore at all. It's because we cling to them. 
We cling to them. And, and David is saying, Lord, I cling to you. So maybe this week, um, not to convict you about your phone use, but maybe this week you, you cling to the Lord like you cling to your phone, right? Holding tight to him, keeping, keep looking at him for those status updates. Keep looking to him for those texts. Lord, I, I need you. Lord, I need you. I, need I want to cling to you. I want to hold on to you like I, like I long for my phone sometimes to do something, to beep at me, to say something. Lord, would you, would you speak to me? Lord, would you give me a little bit of your word? Would I cling to you like I cling to my phone? Now in verses 9 through 11, and I've already alluded to this, David turns to future. All the verbs become future. They will. The king will. Everyone will. Uh, so there is an emphasis then that David is looking towards what is next. So while he, at the beginning of the psalm, this is really interesting, at the beginning of the psalm, he, he worries about his present condition, right? I'm in a dry and weary land. And he wants to get out of that. So he begins to turn to his past. He says, Lord, where have you met me before? What have I done before to, to get out of this dry and weary land? And he, and he finds the Lord in the midst of that. Lord, I'm in a dry and weary land. I have met you before. And he finds living water in that. He finds some water there that he's able to carry not only into his present, but then into his future to say, Lord, people are seeking my life, but you will protect me. Lord, people have come to attack me, but you are going to be there with me. I will rejoice in God while the mouths of liars will be silenced. A relationship with the Lord gives us confidence in the future. So even in the, in the midst of our present troubles and, and trials, we can look back so that we can apply the Lord's presence to here and to tomorrow. Now, uh, one commentator wrote it this way, divine loyalty is a deeper reality than our wilderness experience. Let me read that again. It's, it's an interesting quote. Divine loyalty is a deeper reality than our wilderness experience. What does he mean by that? He means the Lord's promises are sure. The Lord's promises are sure. Sometimes we do not understand the, the difficulties we are going through. But God's loyalty to us, God's promises to us are true and sure. And he will carry us through. A little bit of soul water. Bottle of water. What is a time in your life that you know you are in the presence of the Lord? David draws on that time at, at, when he saw the Lord in the sanctuary. He remembers the place. He remembers the power. He remembers the presence of the Lord. And he utilizes that moment to draw on the living water that the Lord has, that the Lord freely gives to us. He caught a little bit of that water, and it was all that he needed. That moment, that memory is all that he needed to get him through. Psalm 63 is a work of encouragement to us today. You know, I, I wanted to do some psalms that talk about renewal and refreshing, and this is one of them. It draws on the fact that the Lord has met us. And even in the midst of our trials and our tribulations, the Lord will continue to be with us. We continue to have future hope. Everyone gets thirsty. Everyone gets tired. Everyone needs a little bit of water. It may not change our circumstances, but when we reflect on the ways the Lord has met us, it can remind us of his character and it can remind us of his promises to us. His divine loyalty brings us confidence when we are facing our present and our future troubles. Lord, would you give me a drop of your living water that I may, never, that I may know you and never thirst again? Maybe this morning you have never had a moment when you've known the presence of the Lord. Today could be your day. 
Maybe you are going through a dry and weary time and you need to remember the presence of the Lord. Today is surely the day it's wet outside. (laughs) You know, this is a promise to us. Lord, would you show us your presence so that we would have some of your living water? We need it today and we will need it tomorrow. Let's pray. Lord, we've been through dry and weary times when there is no water. We've been thirsty. God, I pray this morning if, if there's anyone who needs you, who needs your presence, Lord, that you would uh, help them to seek you. Lord, would they ask you for the living water that you give freely? And Lord, if there are some here who are going through dry times, Lord, where they just feel like nothing is happening for them, they don't, they don't know you uh, like they used to know you, they're, they're tired, God, and they just don't know what to do, Lord, would you give them a, a glimpse of your presence? Would you remind them of times and places that they've seen you before? Would you remind them of your power and your glory that you have worked in their lives before? Would you remind them that your presence is never far away? Lord, in in these times where we continue to uh, trust in you with our hearts, Lord, would we drink deeply from the well of living water that you provide for us? In Jesus' name, amen.